station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event, Houston. CBS News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Bill Harwood with CBS News. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Well, thank you very much, and we really appreciate you taking the time to chat. Uh, and, you know, you took a fantastic photo of the Crew Dragon coming in against the limb of the Earth the other day. Tell me what this mission means to NASA and its importance for ending the agency's sole reliance on Russia to get astronauts to and from the station. Well, the, uh, uh, the, when I took that picture and, and shared that out, you know, I commented the fact that this is a new era of spaceflight. And that's absolutely what we feel. We've been feeling this build since 2014 when these contracts were first awarded to uh, Boeing and SpaceX for uh, delivery of astronauts to low Earth orbit uh, so that uh, NASA and our national partners uh, can, can continue exploration uh, to deep space, uh, starting with the moon and Mars and, uh, and the future gateway. Uh, and so what this is is a very significant step uh, that marks opening up of the low Earth orbit uh, to commercial companies, not only to uh, shuttle NASA, uh, but perhaps other customers. Uh, you know, this is this may, is a model where NASA is one customer of many, and so I think that the uh, the possibilities are endless for low Earth orbit for science uh, science research and commercial companies. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute, but for as long as I've got you with the mic, Ann, um, you know, you guys are going to be joined next week by three new crew members, including Nick Hagen. Christina Cook, and you get to do two EVAs, we hear, including uh, one with Christina. So uh, you guys will be the 13th and 14th women to walk in space, I think, since 1984. Is that significant to you? I mean, how should we view that? Uh, yes, we do have uh, the new crew coming up. We have three EVAs scheduled at the end of March. Uh, we are very fortunate to work with a very highly skilled and highly trained crew. Uh, as far as the significance, you know, I really believe that uh, the fact that we don't really have to talk about it uh, too much when we're making crew assignments uh, shows that uh, I think that we are, are really just, uh, uh, I suppose, symptoms that, uh, that you know, equality has been reached. We, uh, uh, when NASA makes crew assignments, uh, that's not something that they take into account. And, uh, and so we're really focused on that first uh, spacewalk on March 22nd, and uh, plans for spacewalks after that won't be finalized until after we, uh, we know the results of that one. Well, when that, when that does happen, and I understand exactly what you're saying, I've had the same thought myself, but I guess just because it's only happened 12 times in the past over, you know, with, with scores of, of male spacewalkers, d d does that make you a role model whether you want to be or not? I mean, I mean do you think young women can look at this as another sign that, even in space, these doors are, are now open? Well, I certainly do think that uh, representation is important uh, for a lot of people, a lot of kids, uh, when they, if they want to grow up and be astronauts, uh, you know, it's, it's important for a lot of people to look out and, and see someone that looks like them. Uh, and, you know, what I always tell them is that, uh, is to keep their head down and keep working. And if, uh, if I can be an inspiration to any child that wants to grow up and get into the business of space exploration, then I'm absolutely thrilled to do so. I assume you and Christine have trained together. I just, just wondering briefly what you look forward to the most about uh, putting that helmet on and going out the door. Uh, well, for me, I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was three years old, and certainly, uh, you know, when you picture uh, an astronaut out on a spacewalk, that's kind of the quintessential, uh, uh, you know, moment of, of becoming, you know, when you, when you want to be an astronaut when you're little, that's kind of what you think about. Uh, so for me, um, honestly, our, our, my head's down in preparations. Uh, there's, no, there's no routine day in spaceflight. Uh, spacewalks are one of the more riskier things that we do up here, and so it's very important that uh, we're, we're keeping our heads down, we're focused on our task, um, and, uh, and I suppose after, uh, after it's all gone successfully, then I'll step back and kind of take it all in. Uh, thank you very much, and, and let, me, let, let me get a quick one in for uh, David, if I could. You know, uh, David, you were the board engineer co-pilot during your launch aboard the Soyuz, and I saw you inside the Crew Dragon, and in that wide-angle lens, it looks fairly roomy in comparison. What are, what are your impressions of this new spacecraft? 
Yeah, certainly uh, physically uh, looks uh, kind of very slick inside. Uh, the Soyuz, as you know, has gone through decades of iterations, of improvements, of adding equipment. So, you know, any uh, any spacecraft ends up looking the way it looks. Uh, the uh, So I don't know how it will be to fly uh, the, the Dragon. Uh, I, would, uh, I have not had that training. The one thing that I enjoyed about the Soyuz was this notion that uh, you know, there is most, in most cases, a way for the crew to act manually and take over should something go wrong. Uh, maybe a reflection of the times when it was designed. Um, crew Dragon, it was a beautiful moment to see it approach. Uh, you saw that amazing photos that Anne was able to take. Uh, and it uh, is a moving moment to see the opening of a new chapter uh, where we have this new possibility, a new, a new tool in our quiver for space exploration. Station, this is a station th that concludes the CBS News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from NBC News. This is NBC News Washington. Do you copy? Copy. Standing by. We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Uh, it's Tom Costello at NBC News in Washington. I'd love to talk to you about rugby and my kids' uh, my kids' sore throat, doctor, but why don't we cut right to the chase if we could. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Dr. Saint-Jacques, can we begin with uh, your thoughts about how we are now looking at uh, a new era in space? Uh, are, you, are you guys excited about, uh, you know, following the SpaceX launch, and now we've got a Boeing mission coming up? Does it feel to you like a new day has dawned? I tell you what, you, the way that you said it, absolutely right. The new day has dawned. This is the dawn of a new era in space flight. And those of us that have been in the, involved in the business over the past years have been feeling this momentum build. And I've shared with, with, with friends and, and family over the past years that we are on the cusp of an absolutely amazing period of space flight. Uh, never in the history of space flight have astronauts, American astronauts, trained to fly on four separate vehicles and, de and developed four separate vehicles uh, at the same time, and, and that's what we're doing right now. So our astronaut corps of less than 60 astronauts are currently, uh, you know, flying and training and developing, uh, continuing on the Soyuz. Now we have uh, Boeing and SpaceX and Orion as well for deep space exploration. Uh, so it's absolutely amazing when you think about the destinations that we can go to and commercializing low Earth orbit really opens up the possibilities not only for NASA, uh, but for industry. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, Carl, can I stick with you for just a minute here? I hate to ask a redundant question, but you know we all, we all have to ask Tom uh, questions on our own time. Uh, you are about to participate in an all-female spacewalk, uh, and I'm wondering, does, it feel, does that also feel like, you know, breaking uh, barriers? Uh, you, you know, I, I do understand that uh, I think that that's how it, it can be seen. I think uh, from our perspective, uh, uh, you know, we're really focused on our first spacewalk on March 22nd. Uh, and, uh, and then we kind of, uh, th these events are, are very significant, they're very complicated, and they're one of the riskier tasks that we undertake. And so, uh, so up here on Space Station, our heads are down, uh, we're focused on the work. And I think, uh, I think maybe after that, uh, I'll have time to reflect on it. But you've been a groundbreaker. I'm, I'm going to just push the point for a minute, Colonel. You have been, uh, you've broken a lot of ground uh, in your career. It has to feel rewarding that uh, you're going to be part of this team, an all-female team on a spacewalk. I tell you, the team of four astronauts that we have here, uh, the, uh, uh, with David and Nick, Christina and myself, um, I couldn't ask for a better team. Uh, I think even more significant is that this is all of our first space flight. And so we have been entrusted uh, to do three spacewalks uh, with four first-time flyers. And, uh, and you know, our training uh, has prepared us for this moment. Uh, they, we are ready for the technical tasks, and, uh, and we're really looking forward to doing the mission. All right, one more question for you, Colonel, and then David. But, uh, Colonel, talk to me quickly now, if you don't mind. The Today Show tomorrow is going to be celebrating International uh, Day of the Woman. 
and uh, you've got a unique vantage point from up there looking down on the entire globe. What is your message to women around the world and young girls and women on this International Day of the Women? We'll put this on the Today Show. I think that, uh, that, that my career and, and, and perhaps me being up on the International Space Station can, can really show uh, women and girls and, and everybody that, uh, that hey, we're, we're not just sitting at the table, we're leading the table. Uh, there's no excuses. You can accomplish whatever you want to. Uh, you just got to you just gotta throw your hat in the ring. You got to get out there and, and do it. And Dr. Solzhak, I don't want to uh, miss an opportunity to ask you as well. The Canadian up on board that space station, what does it feel like to you to have now, uh, you know, it appears to be the dawn of, uh, of a new era in manned space flight to the space station and beyond? Yeah, you, you put it well. Uh, it is really a, an emotional moment. It was an emotional moment to see the, the docking. We're kind of already sad to imagine that uh, already uh, Dragon, uh, we're going to have to bid farewell to Dragon. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, wow, really, uh, there is an amazing, amazing momentum around the world uh, led by the United States and NASA. And I'm very proud, particularly, that Canada has joined the bandwagon on the next step. And we're going to join to the projects of Gateway and then hopefully further on to Mars. And all these... Uh, futuristic dreams. We can see a glimpse of them uh, with things like uh, Crew Dragon. It really is rare, of course, that we have new spacecraft, so this is a moment uh, to cherish. And uh, it's kind of fun to let your imagination uh, go uh, run wild into what this could uh, lead us to. Congratulations to you both. Thank you for your time. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the NBC News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from ABC News. Station. Station, it's David Curley, ABC News. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome up to the International Space Station. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. Um, heard your words on the welcoming ceremony for Crew Dragon. Uh, they were quite touching. What were you hoping to accomplish with what you said as this space capsule arrived at station? You know, when we come up to the International Space Station and we can look back at our Earth and it's this it's this marrying up of an amazing view of our planet while sitting inside some of the most advanced technology that's ever been developed by humans across the world. And it gives you this perspective of really what we're capable of when we focus on our common interests instead of our differences. Every single day we work with people across the globe who are driven by a passion for exploration and a desire to know, to go beyond uh, where humans have ever gone before. And when you get that perspective, you feel this obligation to share it with people. You feel like if you could just tell everybody, if you could make everybody feel the way that you feel and see the things that you see, uh, we could just do even more amazing things. So the message that I really hope to communicate was to tell everybody like, hey, look what we can do when we really work together. You, that was a first, having a private capsule arrive. Another first is coming, potentially you and Christina out the first all-female spacewalk. Are you thinking about that? Uh, the spacewalks that are coming up, we have three spacewalks scheduled at the end of March and the beginning of April for our uh, uh, for the crew of the four of us. And uh, we're absolutely thinking about the EVAs. We've been preparing for the EVAs, uh, the spacewalks, for, uh, for months now. And uh, as we get closer, our first spacewalk is on uh, March 22nd, and the teams are all diligently preparing for it, and, uh, and we are looking forward to it. But it'll be historic. Did you get that? It'll be historic, all female. Uh, yes, the, uh, um, the second one, uh, depending on the outcome of the first uh, spacewalk, the second one uh, right now is uh, scheduled for Christina and myself uh, to continue the, uh, the upgrades on the outside of the space station. 
Uh, we understand that it is a uh, significant uh, historically. I think right now our teams uh, we have so much to focus on and prepare for up here um, that uh, that our heads are kind of down. Um, but uh, but we certainly understand uh, the significance of it, and uh, and hopefully uh, you know in the future uh, it won't be such a surprise to folks. Uh, uh, you know we, they uh, NASA certainly doesn't take it into account when making crew assignments. It just kind of happened that way, uh, which in and of itself is probably a sign of uh, of where we're at. Before I get to David, uh, I talked to Nick Haig. He says he's a rookie now coming up, and you're going to have to show him that any rookie pranks plan that you can tell us about. Well, uh, yeah, we've been talking a lot about uh, tricks for on the ascent. Uh, we're both uh, the kind of co-pilots of the Soyuz, so there's a lot of tricks that we share among among ourselves. Uh, and then. Uh, how to prepare really is uh, is the most important, and what we find regularly tell people is, once you get to space station, there's procedures, there's ground control, there's your colleagues who've been there several months, you'll be okay. What you really have to prepare for is your family, your loved ones, kind of prepare, wrap up things, make sure you leave with no loose ends, uh, because uh, you know you never know what happens here first, and B, uh, it's kind of difficult to manage your life when you're up here. We are really in an extreme place. It doesn't look like here, it's very comfortable, but <laughs> we are on orbit, so you don't want to have to manage your bank account or uh, you know, prepare uh, uh, you know, presents for your kids while up here. It's better to plan all that while you're on the ground. I wondered whether, uh, I wondered whether you were going to prank him on station, but let's move on. David, you were the first into the capsule, the Dragon capsule. Did you slide into the seat? How did it feel? Yeah, so I had the, uh, I just, uh, uh, I guess I pulled the, the lucky straw there and uh, was the first one to open that hatch. Uh, but, you know, as everything we do here, uh, uh, and Anne put it well uh, pre previously, it's got a mixture of magic and of just very mundane technicalities. I was focused on getting the steps right because it's a new, whenever you do something new for the first time, you got to get extra focus because it's the first time, right? You're just reading this from procedures or from training. So um, even though it was historic and emotional, we were really heads down making sure we were doing everything step by step correctly. But I had these moments of, wow, aha, when kind of the light of the inside and the view of the beautiful cockpit, it kind of looks a bit like a, like a business uh, class <laughs> <laughs> spacecraft. <laughs> I think we're out of time. Both of you, thank you very much. ABC signing off. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, CBS News, NBC News, and ABC News Station. We are resuming operational audio comms.